Welcome, everybody. Um, Bonsai Society of Portland, thank you so much for having us tonight. Ryan is in Japan um, at the uh, World Bonsai Federation. He's translating for Master Kimura. So tonight we have a special guest that's going to be taking us through um, our second installment of the Bonsai Fundamentals course. Um, everyone online, I'm Kendall. You finally get to see me on the screen after long trying to not make this happen. But um, yeah, we're so happy to have Todd here. He's a longtime Mirai student and friend. Um, he just has quit his nine to five job to pursue Bonsai full time professionally. So super excited to hear what he has to say. Todd? Last year, um, I was driving to Nebraska, and while I was driving out there, it was my, the second workshop that I'd done. And so I was listening to a podcast, and uh, during the podcast, the guy said that you grow the most when you're outside of, your, um, of where you're comfortable, right? And so I kind of took that to heart, and so when I went out there, I was like, if they book me again for this year, then this is what I'm going to do full time. And so they did, and so here I am now. So I cut the safety net, um, and uh, right now I'm, I'm growing and, and, and learning about this and following my passion. So that's kind of a little background on Woo! me. Um, yeah, and that's fine. I know that, I know that my, um, I get all choked up over I know, it. it's so <laughs> good, know, it's so good. That's, that's not how it's supposed to be, but. I know my parents are watching, so I wanted to say hi to, <laughs> to my Yay. mom and my dad. Okay. <laughs> anyway. It's a big so deal. It's a <laughs> lifestyle shift. It yeah. is. Uh, it is. So um, it's And we really, we really threw you in the fire. He just, like, a month ago started doing this full time. We're like, you want to come do yeah. a live stream? So, so I'd been talking to Lion. It's like, maybe next year I could come present for the club. And then Ryan writes me. He's like, how about in April? How about April? next week? And it's like, yeah. OK. So <laughs> trial by fire, I guess. So That's Mariah's style, trial yeah, by I fire. Like it. Yeah, I um, like it. So anyway, <laughs> it's great to be here. Um, it is really impressive. I know um, when I was here or watching the last live stream, Ryan was talking about, and for the launch I was here, how just robust the club is, how big it is, and it is really impressive. So it's great to be here. It's great to see um, everyone on the live stream. Uh, welcome. And so tonight, um, we'll just start and we'll get into it, right? So tonight we're going to yeah. talk about energy distribution, okay? And so there's an assume that we need to have uh, before we start doing anything, and that is we have a, that we have a healthy tree, right? If we don't have a healthy tree, we shouldn't be doing anything, right? And so that's a given. And so where does the health, we'll just start with a little uh, refresher. It's like, where does the health of a tree start? Yeah, the roots, right? And it starts with a good balance of? Water and oxygen, water and oxygen right. And so when we have that, then the tree can start, the tree can start growing, start putting on, you know, uh, better, better foliage growth because a tree won't grow unless um, it has a little excess energy, right? Because a tree doesn't have a credit card, right? It's cash only with plants. And so if it doesn't have anything to give, um, it won't grow. And, and just because a tree grows, all that means is that it has enough um, energy to add to maintain an ad, right? So this is all, we're all well aware of that. So then, assuming that that is a given, then we need to look at our trees and figure out what are we trying to do with our trees, right? Is it a tree that is in development or is it a tree that's in refinement, okay? And so tonight as we're talking, um, we have several trees here that are in different phases of that, of that growth, okay? And so, if we start and we look at, at this, and so too, sorry, before we get into that, these techniques that we're going to talk about tonight are the same for everything, right? Whether it's deciduous, which we have, a broadleaf conifer, which is this, or, or a broadleaf evergreen, or a conifer, right? And so for conifers, uh, we have elongating species, uh, we have pines, and we have junipers, right? So, but out of all that, there's one tree that we don't touch this time of year, right? We just let it do its thing regardless. And do we all know what that is? So if we're talking about development, and then we're talking about refinement, which means pinching, right? So out of those two, is there a tree this time of year we don't do 
any foliage maintenance to? Nope. Do we know? So the only thing we don't touch right now are junipers, right? Right now, junipers do their own thing. So we can leave junipers alone. All right? So all that, do we all understand that so far? Any questions? OK. So this tree right here, this is a tree in development, OK? How do you know that? Well, OK. So, Good. so trees that are in development, we don't have much back budding, right? And so that's, once we get back budding, once back budding starts growing, then we get that secondary tertiary growth, right, which is refinement, which is how we, we have take our trees to that next level, right? And so what we need to do with trees that are in, like this in the de developmental stage, is we need to get that back budding, okay? So how do we get back budding on a tree like this and trees that are being developed? Like this new growth, what do we do with it? We let it grow, right? And so by letting it grow, what does that do? Pardon? Let the, new shoots come out. Let the new shoots come out. And then what do they do once they're out? We have, a, yeah, they, they grow up, they harden, but they, they, they're producing a greater surface area to photosynthate, right? To create photosynthesize. And when they photosynthesize, then they're creating more food, right? And so trees that are in development, we're, at, we're letting them elongate, and then they're creating more food which is going down, right, starches and carbohydrates to the roots, and then coming up is water and nutrients, right? Water and, new sor and resources. And so as that traffic goes, right, coming back and forth, coming back and forth, the branches get stronger, and then once this elongates and then hardens off, then we come in later in the year, and what do we do? We cut it back. And when we cut it back, what does that do? What are we removing? Oxen, right? So this is a review, too, of, of stuff we learned last time. We remove the oxen. And the thing with oxens that's very interesting is that oxens begin in the roots, OK? Their highest concentration, and I just learned this recently, too, the highest concentration is out here on the tip. But it begins in the roots. And so as water comes up, as the resources come up, that oxen comes up and goes to those places where water is lost the most, OK? And so on the apex of a tree, right, that is the highest uh, concentration of oxen because the most, most water is lost up there, right, through evaporation. Same on these branches that come out on the ends of them. That's where the most water is lost. And so in those areas, that's where the highest concentration of an oxen is. And so when we cut that back and that, and that branch is strong, then we get butt back budding, right? So that's how we need to deal with trees in development. Okay? Can you just walk us through what oxen is, just for review? Yeah, it's like it's a yeah. hormone, right, that okay. suppresses the growth of buds behind it, right? So that's why um, trees, like out in the wild, with an apex, right? That's why we, on a lot of them, when there's one apex, there's not three or four because that one top of it has the oxen and it's suppressing everything else around it, right? And so when you cut that off, um, does that answer the question? Yeah. Or do I need to explain a little That's more? just for me. People oh, didn't ask yeah. that. I just yeah. <laughs> but, all, but once we get back buds, all those back buds have oxen, right? They all have an oxen in it. But the highest concentration is at the tip because that loses the most water. So let's go back to talk about just this tree and where it's at sure. and how you know where it's at. Yeah. So <laughs> by looking at this, we don't have any back budding on this, OK? And a lot of these branches here that are growing out, like this is a nice branch. And we have a leaf here, but there's no, um, no back buds in there, OK? Same here. It's like there's foliage, but there's no back buds. And so when we're taking off that oxen, we're trying to drive that energy back in, right? And so that's what we're talking about tonight, is that energy distribution. It's, we're, we're distributing the energy later in the year when we cut off um, cut off the tips and forcing that energy back in. This is a coastal live oak. So this is a, uh, a broadleaf evergreen, right? So other, uh, what, silverberry, right, is another one. Uh, boxwood is one. What other one are there? Pardon? Olive. Oh, olive. So just for my sake, sure. 
where this tree's at, yes. where it's going, can you tell me kind of the vision for what you want to see happening with this tree, with the work you're going to be doing right now in this season? Yeah, okay. So with this tree right now, we're not going to do anything, okay? We don't do anything. <laughs> it's easy. Yeah, this is, this is an easy one. So we'll just let all this new growth Because extend. it's developing and you want it to just grow and get robust. Right. And and so, fuller, so that you can come yep. in later. Yeah, and, and it's like get more resources flowing through all these branches, right? Okay. So actually, before, okay, I, I, let's take a step back from that. So we're trying to get this even stronger, right? We're letting the new foliage grow. Uh, but what else should we be doing to this tree then? Fertilizing. Fertilizing, right. So let's talk about that, and we'll just do a quick review on that, right? So uh, last month we talked about the two petals, right? And so one is quantity and one is timing. Okay, so reviewing with that, something that is in a uh, developmental stage, which petal are, are we pushing, right? Or which two? There's uh, like heavy, there's moderate, and there's uh, like small, a smaller dosage, right? So for something like this, we're going to use a heavy. And so what's the definition of like a heavy fertilization? It's like one and a half every... Four weeks, one and a half tablespoons every four weeks. And then a moderate fertilization is one tablespoon every six weeks. And then a, a light schedule of that is a half a tablespoon every eight weeks. Okay? So that's just, when we're talking about um, heavy, moderate, or small, that's, that's what we'll be referring to. Okay? So something like this, this being in development, will do a heavy dose, right? A fertilization. And so, here we have these, these tea bags, right, that, that we use. And so with something like this, we'll do it the same. On this tree here, it's kind of hard to see where we can place, like, all the fertilizer because this thing takes up so much space, right? But it's also a smaller container. So we can put one here, right? And so we'll take this, stick that there. Then we can take this one. Now, what is the benefit of using tea bags, or why do we use it? Is it, is it better to use tea bags here, or is it better just to have it open, or what's the, what's the use of these? Like, why do we use them? It keeps the birds away. <laughs> oh, well. No, it doesn't. That's, yeah. Okay, so here you could just have your regular fertilizer out, right? But then back here, you see where this is kind of up here or we have a slope, right? That's what these are really good for. It's like when you have some type of inclination or whatever, then you can take this. Put it, yes, this is root mass. It is. So with this tree, all these were roots. Not to get off on too much of a tangent, but just this is pretty interesting how this is done. So these were tangent, roots. Tangent away. That's why yeah. we're here. All right. The, <laughs> like the angle of the tree was changed. And then all these were our exposed roots. Make sure that detail cam can see. Uh, see we good? That. Okay. Yeah. So all these are exposed roots. And so as you can see here, there's wire right here. Okay. And so what's, what's been done here is, is taking sphagnum and soil and putting those around those exposed roots and then bringing them down into the pot here. So even though these roots are sticking outside of the pot, they're still viable working roots, okay? And so it's like that's a way to preserve it. That's a way maybe we need these roots in order for the tree to thrive, you know? And so you keep them in there and you keep them alive. So it's really interesting how much you can manipulate roots and different things to uh, keep the roots alive and functioning when they're even outside of the container, okay? So that's what, that's what all this is right here. Those are all viable live roots. Any questions on that? And we could talk about building fences and stuff like that all day. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun, so. Okay, so with fertilizer, that's where we are on this tree, right? We wanna let, let it elongate let it um, 
push resources and traffic right along all these branches. And so too, as you can see here, on this tree, there's a couple back buds on this, right? But for the most part, there aren't on this tree. So when you're looking at your trees, you also need to, just because this tree is in development, maybe this branch isn't. And as we go through and start looking at some of these other trees, we, we'll see other examples of that, okay? So. So this tree's in development. Yep. We have some other trees that are in refinement. Yep. What are some telltale signs to, for if I had a bonsai, how do I know, oh, this is in development versus refinement? Yeah. So the lack of, of back budding. The lack of back budding. That's the lack of back budding, okay. right? That's the main indicator that once our tree is being more refined, we have more back budding, we have those secondary tertiary growth. Okay? Cool. Any other questions on that? How old is the tree? How old is the tree, someone asked. I don't know that, to be honest. And so with species... Troy, Troy might know. Yeah. Troy? Troy. All right, Troy doesn't know either. He doesn't know. 50 How much? plus. 50 plus. 50 yeah. plus. Yeah. Yeah, on, um, on species like this, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how... Someone on the chat was wondering if they would treat quince the same. In a developmental stage? In a developmental stage, yeah. Sure. Cool. I mean, that's the thing with everything, right? Any tree, any tree that's in the developmental stage, we want to let it grow. We don't want to pinch. You know, there's kind of this misconceived notion that it's like the tree's starting to grow. I want to pinch it to keep all the energy in here, right? But it's like that's, that's not right. What we want is we want more foliage mass so the tree photosynthesizes more, and that's where the food comes from, right? The food doesn't come from fertilizer, right? Like we learned last month, it's like it all comes from sunlight. So we want to increase that surface area where the tree can photosynthesize. Yeah. So for all species like that, we'll use, we'll use the extend, harden, and then cut back. So that takes a lot of patience to let your tree get really like bushy and bushy. overgrown. Mm -hmm. And because I would find... If it was me, I'm so impatient, I would want to go in and like tinker. Sure. But that's the way to make them. But then when you come back and cut it back, it's like you could pinch you it can now. Find new things yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, I want, it, I want to pinch it and keep it all nice and needy, but you're not helping the tree. You're weakening the tree, and by. Um, it's like your tree will develop quicker if you just let it do its thing for a while. Okay? So we all understand that, right? All right. So let's move on from this. Yes, yeah. sir. Question. Are we looking to let this grow and extend until the leaves harden off and then begin to cut back? Yeah. And so in, um, I think out here, would, the timing would be probably fairly close to in Denver. But in Denver, probably the end of July, beginning of August, then I'd come in and start cutting this back, right? And so another thing, too, when we're cutting this back, we want to leave some of the new foliage, right? Because that's, it's a better... Um, you know, means to photosynthesize. And so if you cut it back, if you just let it go and cut back to the old foliage without letting, without having any back buds, you could lose the branch, right? So you always want to leave some, some of the new foliage. Awesome. Anything else? Are we good? Any more questions? All right. Let's go on. All right, next we're going to do, we're going to talk about pinching. All right. So this is a beach, okay? And so with, this is a pretty refined tree. And so with trees that are, in, uh, that are being refined, we want to pinch them back, right? And so that was the one thing I was saying. Um, the trees that we never uh, pinch are junipers, right? So right now, even if you have a juniper that's, being, that's in a state of refinement, we won't touch it, right? We just need it to... To grow Why don't long. we pinch junipers? Because you weaken the tree, right? And it's like just a review again. Junipers, the, the health of junipers or the strength of junipers are in the foliage, right? And so you'd need to let them, let them grow, let them gain that energy, and then we cut back to strong secondary branching, okay? The question is, is this a raft or is it a series, a set of trees? No, this is a raft. Together. Yeah, it's a raft. So with this, this is a deciduous, right? But we still pinch the same, okay? So we'll come in here, as we can see. And this just opened up 
like quite a bit in the last couple days. When, when this first got brought into the studio. Yeah, things exploded. Yeah, it really is. Most stuff, um, most of the buds were kind of looking, I don't know, like that. And that was yesterday that we brought this in. So this thing is just really, really exploded. So we're going to come in here and start pinching, OK? So when you pinch, how much, how much do we pinch off? Scott's got a question. Yeah. So yeah, what I'm got to really talk into it loud. So he asked just what am I doing? Okay. <laughs> and so here I'm just coming in and we have I'll sh come out here too for you guys. So we're coming in, we have this like some excess leaves here, right? The shoots and so we're pinching this back. We're taking out that foliage there, leaving a few leaves. But when we pinch, we're not just pinching um like 50% or 20% or whatever, you know? There, there has to be a reason for what we're doing. And so when we pinch, we're trying to look at what's the silhouette, okay, of the pad that we're pinching. And so when we see that, then we pinch to maintain that silhouette. So if something goes out of the silhouette, then we pinch it. If it's sometimes maybe we want something to elongate, and so we won't pinch it because we want it to fill a little extra space, okay? So that's what I'm doing here. It's like we'll come in and start pinching all this. So on this one I left three. This one's getting a little long, a little too far up, so then I'll leave two there, okay? Here, we'll just turn this this way. This one here, right? It's a little big. We'll pinch back to two. This one, same thing, back to two. Does everyone here pinch their uh, pinch their deciduous? Everyone. And do you do it about this time of year? It's like how is how are things out here compared to like previous years? No, like previous years. It's like out here. It's been. It's been uh, like a little colder, right? It's like in Denver last month. It's been awful. <laughs> it's been terrible here. <laughs> Just because of so much rain? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. And it's interesting because in Denver, March is our snowiest month, right? And we haven't, we didn't get anything. We didn't get a single bit of precipitation. I mean, it's not even traceable. Our snowiest month, nothing. So then everything in Denver, it's been dry and it's been hot. So then everything's just growing like crazy. I think we got a question from the audience. Yeah. What are some negative effects from not pinching early and waiting long? And how would you correct those? Yeah, that's a really good question. So let's say, let's say you don't want to wait, or you, you don't, you want to wait, right? And it's like, oh, I got, I'm just going to wait until everything gets to the same length, right? And then I'll pinch. Um, and so what will happen if you do wait is as it elongates and it maybe it starts hardening off a little more, but also the, 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 the new growth will get a little coarser, okay? And so if we come in and we pinch while it's still soft and supple like that, you'll get that, that finer, that lighter growth, okay? So here, we'll just keep going around. There are a lot of buds on this tree which are not out yet. Right. Will you come back next week or the week after and do your pinching then? Yeah, exactly. So when you're pinching trees and you're doing this, this is not a just like a one-time thing, right? I'm pinching this today, I'll never, it's, it's done for the year. So you'll have to look at this and come back several times, because as Roger was saying, um, we could pull some of these open, right? And we can pinch some of these. But these we can't pinch right now. So in a week, maybe in a couple days, all these here, right? Those aren't ready to be pinched. So this is, it's a, it's a process that'll take, you know, it'll take a, a series of time and maybe um, into the end of the month you're still pinching. 
Okay, so it's, and each tree, it's like some trees come out a little quicker, some trees slow down a little, you know, they're behind others, even though they're the same species, so. Would you treat a Japanese maple in the same manner? Yep, yep. All deciduous, right? All deciduous trees will, will pinch right now. Because remember, if we let them harden off a little more and then we come in and pinch them or cut them, they start bleeding, right? I'm thinking of the relationship of the maple yep. and the fertilization and mm -hmm. pinching. Our what? And, and the pinching process that you're discussing. Right. Okay. Yep. My question is, if you're heavily fertilizing a maple, uh -huh. the inner nodes are going to become much longer than you perhaps want. So maybe as that maple starts to grow, right. its first flush of growth, yep. you fertilize lightly, mm -hmm. and then once those leaves have hardened, then you fertilize heavily. That'll keep the inner nodes shorter. Is that a okay. line of reasoning that makes sense? I, yes, I understand that, okay? But let's say with the Japanese maple, and it's growing right now like this, okay? So that energy that it's putting forth right now is not from, fertili not if, is not from fertilization if you do it right now, right? right? And again, it's like, what are we trying to do where's the development of the tree. So if we're still trying to help it get ramified, then letting that elongate, gain energy, and cutting back is still good, right? That's what we want to do. But what you're saying, or what you're asking, is give it a light, depending on, uh, is it like a tree in development, or is it a tree that's ramified? Mm -hmm. So then right now, what you would do is give it a light application, right? Because trees that are in refinement, you want to give them a lighter application, but any fertilizer you're giving now is not affecting this new growth right now. This new growth is being affected by the fertilization that you did last year, right? So that's the new resources coming up. But what you're doing now, it's, it's spending all this energy, you're going to pinch it, and then you're kind of setting it up, you know, for uh, healthier growth later in the year, okay? Does that all make sense? Okay. So I'm going to keep, we'll keep pinching this. Any other questions? I was going to say, I can't be explaining it that well, right? Pinching versus using a tool and making a prop, uh, uh, cut. Here, make sure you're speaking to the mic. Oh, cutting it? Yeah, versus cutting it. Is there a value to pulling it versus cutting it? I mean, I think with stuff that is this supple and soft, it's like, I think by pinching it, you get a, like a cleaner cut than if you go in and cut it. Because when you're cutting it, you're, you're really almost just crushing it, right? Even though it's a nice, clean mark. But um, at least that's... That's my justification for it, right? It's, it's just you get, a, you get a cleaner cut if you pinch it other than, than cutting it. So does anyone cut like their new foliage on deciduous trees? You do? No adverse. Uh... Depends. Whatever is easier. Yeah. All right. Someone online asked if it's too late to fertilize. He says his trees haven't come out of cold frames, but he has lots of growth on everything. Well, if he's getting lots of growth, they should probably be out of the cold frame, right? Um, but when we fertilize, if they're starting to grow, then we should fertilize, right? We shouldn't fertilize if we don't have any metabolic activity, right? Or else you're just wasting fertilization. So if, I would tell him if his trees are growing. You can tell him in the camera. Hey, he's, he's watching. who is it? What's his name? His name is Bonsai Guy. Oh, Bonsai Guy. <laughs> Um, my suggestion would be if your trees are growing, they should probably be out of a cold frame where they're getting a little more sun. But also when you bring trees out of a cold frame, when you bring them out of greenhouses, um, you need to watch that new growth, right? Because the cuticle hasn't formed. Usually in places, in situations like that, um, if you bring them out and you put them in full sun, then they burn, right? They'll burn. And so we need to... Um, to protect them. So I always try to bring them out, if I can, on days where it's cloudy. And ideally, 
um, it'd be days where two or three days it's cloudy. You know? <laughs> yeah, out here it's fine. It's like, yeah. I, I should I pay attention to where I'm happen. speaking. I don't in, know. In Denver, you gotta you gotta watch that because. Uh, you live in Colorado. We're so jealous. <laughs> yeah, but it's interesting. Like living in Colorado, we don't deal um, with the same amount of like pests and fungus and stuff like that. But also, um, it's like your trees out here. It's the grow capital of the world, you know. So it's it's. There's a there's a trade-off there. They're fat and you know? happy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we got a question? Yeah. If we're like if a tree is at a point where you're still trying to build a trunk, do you sure. want to pinch in order to create two where there was one, or do you just want to let everything go? You let everything grow, right? So pinching it's like shorter, um, shorter inner nodes. It's like if you're trying to get a larger trunk, then you just want the most amount of resources flowing. So you would just let it go and and probably not even um, like in the fall come and cut it back. You know, you just want to let it grow, right? Do you have a question or are you just raising your hand? Okay. Um, okay, so on this, with a tree that's ramified like this, yeah. So what kind of fertilization will we do on this? Yeah, a moderate to light fertilization probably. So here, we'll do that right now. Hey, Todd. Yes, sir. The fact that the uh, beech is a single flush type of deciduous tree, would that affect how you're fertilizing it? Hmm. In other words, if you le you can't leaf prune a beech, it won't, it right. won't uh, leaf out again. I don't think so. I think with this, you do. <coughs> you would pinch it, and you would continue that same f the fertilization because what it'll do is it'll just keep taking resources, and if it won't flush again, then it's just building a larger reserve for next year. Okay, so that's what I would do on this. Is I, um, I would still fertilize this uh, the same. But two, with a tree that's refined like this, we're doing a lighter dose, right? So we're not going to do a heavy dose. Um, Renny was wondering if you're pinching leaves that have just opened. Yes. Yes. So all this, like we were saying before, all of this looked like this or some of these guys here when we first started, when it was yesterday. So these are just opening right now. So here we have those. And so here I'm kind of zigzagging this, right? Since we have a larger pot, doing a medium type or a medium to light fertilization on this. And so let since me get one not more. All, since not all of the leaves have opened yet, are you going to have to come in later and pinch more? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So like this whole branch here, this really isn't ready to be pinched yet. So maybe. It may be a day, it may be a week, but sometime in the next month we'll have to, you know, when these open up, we'll have to, you'll have to come back in and, and, and repinch those. Are there any branches on this forest that are still in development? Or is this a pretty refined? Like, are, are there some that you're choosing to not touch, to let them grow out on, on this particular forest? Right. So as we look at this, we can see... On this one, not as much, because um, this is pretty well ramified. But we'll, t we'll, was that a question online? No, that was. Oh, that it's was just yours, yeah. So when we, when we go look at the spruce, there's some stuff there that we'll look at that's, it's like some of it's, it's still in development, right? So depending, just because we have one tree that is being, uh, that is highly ramified, there's still sections in there that are still, um, still in development. So let me finish pinching this. Todd? I heard my name. Whoa. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so I noticed there's uh, much uh, less of an incline. Got to speak up. Much less of an incline 
on uh, this situation. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But I, it, you're still using the tea bags. Correct. All I brought were tea bags. Roger that. So that's why I'm putting just tea bags on this. Instead of bringing like the bulk and putting that on, I just figured I'd just bring tea bags. So. All right. I got a question from Chris online. Yes, Chris. This is a yes, Chris. Personal. He he has a personal joke in here for you. Uh, he says, I have an old blue spruce, quote unquote, stinker that he got from you a couple years ago. Uh, it's an inside joke. He says, it was repotted um, for the first time since collection. When would you start to fertilize and would you let it run new growth like the deciduous trees? Okay. So blue spruce. It was repotted this year? Yes. Okay. So once you can tell that the, like the root system is healthy again, Right, and so how you can tell, how you can tell is, how do we tell when a, like a root system is kind of taken over again? New growth, also like the soil will start drying out a little quicker. You know, do you ever notice that with like trees, you, huh? Yeah, not right now. In Denver, when I start watering, and uh, it's like maybe it's dry for a couple days, or it's wet for a couple days, the soil is, and it's like, okay, you have to watch it, and then, Maybe a week later, all of a sudden, it's a day and a half. And then all of a sudden, every day, you have to water. It's like, okay, the, the roots have started to show that that balance between water and oxygen is back in there, right? And so once that happens, then, um, then if you're going to fertilize for, on a spruce, I would do, for, uh, the first part, do a very light fertilization, right? So we would do maybe a half tablespoon every eight weeks. Um, but I don't fertilize. Once you repot, don't fertilize until you can see that the root system has kind of taken back over, right? Cool. Stinker. Yeah. Do you remember <laughs> that tree? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do. Why is it called Thanks that? Thanks for chiming in, Chris. Because it's just a... It's, it's a, a stinker? It's a stinker okay. of a tree because it's pretty <laughs> awesome. Yeah. A pair of uh, questions on the fertilizer. Sure. What's in the tea bags? And secondly... Sure. Are alternate fertilizers in suspension uh, applied when you water also acceptable? Fertilizers in suspension. So what do you, like spray on? Like No, no spraying, just watering on there. Okay. Like a Dynagro product, for example. Oh, well, what's in here is BioGold, okay? So... I personally just use all organics. So if you had something like that where you're spraying on it and it's organic, um, that's fine. But what we're doing here is having these in specific locations, right? We're trying to do a high concentration of the fertilizer into specific areas, okay? And so I just use, I just use um, organics because like some of those inorganics tend to have a lot of salt. And so, I don't know, if I eat a very salty meal, I want to drink water, right? And so a lot of salt in the container. Salt wants water, my roots want water. So I would just rather have the roots have the water and not, uh, um, not have to deal with salt. So that's just my personal justification for using all organics. That answer? Not really. We have a question over here. Yes. Yeah, I think I had the same question. Okay. Um, so, um, um, aside from just tea bagging the tree, uh -huh. do you also um, like when you water it? Do you put fertilizer in the water? I don't. Just the water and I the don't. tea bags. Then? I don't. Um, the only instance that I will do that is if. Um, I collect trees as well, and so if there's a tree that's out of collection, then I will use an inorganic, right, but, and foliar feed it, um, especially junipers, because junipers are, you know, very receptive to humidity and stuff like that, especially if the roots have been fairly co much compromised. So then I'll foliar feed with that, but other than that, I don't, um, I don't do any spray fertilizers when, when I water. Yeah, at Mirai, we use BioGold. Yeah. Solely. Yeah. Right, Troy? Yeah. yeah. Look at me. I know. I know. Oh, my God. You're all over it. <laughs> I love hey, it. Todd, we have another question over here. If you all don't right. Mind. Where are we? Here. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, you've mentioned ramification a couple of times. And sure. I'm wondering if it is that like a physical description or just mean it has a lot of branches and it's ready to show? Yeah, that's and question. so that's a, that's a really good question. It's like, what does ramification mean? And so if we look, here's a good example where we have, and I don't know if, if you all can see that out there, but here's, here it is for the live stream. There is a lot of branches here that are unopened, you know, a lot of buds, and we have one, two, three, just right here, right? So ramification is a lot of those secondary uh, branches and then off of them having extra buds, right? Tertiary, tertiary branches. And uh, so that's, that's just the definition of ramification, right? So at tree and development, we have one branch and then we'll get two branches and then off of that you get two branches, right? So that's where the ramification comes in. Is that what you were asking? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Anything else on the beach? Question yes. Question from the live stream. For a beach and development, Brandon's asking this. He says, for a beach and development, is it a good practice to pinch apex areas and let lower branches go to help with trunk development? Pinch apex areas. Is it a good practice to pinch apex areas and let lower branches go to help with trunk development? Well, if you're trying to get the trunk larger, then that is development. But when we talk development, we're talking about development of of branches, not trunk. Okay, so if you want to, Brandon, if you want to get your trunk bigger, the best way to do it is to take it and plant it in the ground and then just let the thing grow like a regular tree. Okay, so when we come in, if we pinch the top, you're not going to help, um, you're not going to help the trunk grow, right? If you're trying to get the trunk to enlarge, you're not going to touch the tree at all. You're just going to let the tree go. So that but would be a tree in development if you're trying to It get is the a tree, but yes. But it's like a tree in development where you're trying to get a larger trunk. Right. Brandon. Not uh, what we're doing here with pinching is we're assuming, we're assuming that and that's okay, so that's a good question. We're assuming that we have a trunk that we like. And then now it's like, okay, let's get the branches to where so we like So if we them. want a thicker trunk, we're going to just let it grow and Just not let it grow. I wouldn't pinch. I would just let the thing grow. Yep. So here's a limber, okay? This is a limber pine that's, that's pretty well ramified. And so we're getting these candles, right? You want to show so, the live stream the candles? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Here's a good candle, okay? Candles. There's candles, some nice candles all over the place. So with a single, plush, pl uh, single flush pine, we're doing the same thing that we are doing with a deciduous, and it'll be the same thing that we'll do um, with the spruce, is that we have a silhouette here, and so that's what we're trying to maintain. Okay, We always want to maintain that silhouette. And so here with this limber, we have this smaller bud here. We have this really large bud. And then over here, you guys can't see it, but we'll show the live stream. Can you get that? There's four, three other buds in there. Okay, so when these all grow, this is going to be a really full pad. So what we'll do, same thing here, is we're going to come in here and we'll pinch this off. The larger one. The larger one. Because mm -hmm. at the moment, these smaller these smaller buds back here, they're not to a point to where we can pinch them, right? So it's the same thing. And we want to have like even distribution throughout this tree. So on these big candles here, like here's one right here, right? Like that. We'll come in, same thing, and pinch that bud. Always trying to maintain this silhouette. So we don't really want anything to come out much further, right? This is nice. The silhouette's nice. That last candle. Uh huh. How many did you leave there? Uh, on this one, about seven or eight needles, right? So we don't want to, on this, same with limber, right? Limber's not like a black pine, so we don't want to remove all that, that new growth, right? Black pines, we come back, cut a little nub, sets four buds like that, right? It's a multi flush pine. This is a single flush pine. So if we came in and removed, um, on this, actually, you could probably take this strong one off because there's secondary buds back there. So we can do that, 
right? If there weren't secondary buds and you completely remove that, you'd probably lose that branch, okay? So there's some like misconceived notions on, on different uh, species of pine where it's like, oh, you completely cut the tip off or whatever to get back budding in there. It's like if you have no back budding in there, then you won't, um, you'll probably lose that branch. Does that make sense? Is this the same for mugo and white pines as well? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yep, same. Pinch them. And that's the thing too. It's like one of the... Um, like one of the mysteries, it's like, how do you, what about pinions, right? There's been a lot of talk recently about pinions. So it's like pinions candle, right? They'll candle. Yep. So we could probably pinch a pinion, right? Pinch the buds on a pinion. Um, yeah, so let me pinch these. We'll get these pinched. Always maintaining the silhouette. And then on a tree like this, this one has two that's going. So we'll pinch both of those. So what kind of fertilization will we do on this? Yep. Yeah. This is the time to go ahead and do the candling right now for single flush. Sure. If it's candling like this, then yes. Yep. But then again, OK, if this is a tree in development, what do we do? Just let it grow, right? Someone asked if it had been repotted this year, would you pinch it? Yeah. I don't think that got on the mic. If it was repotted, this is what I would do. I think that's on like a tree-to-tree -tree basis, okay? So if this had been repotted and it didn't skip a beat and it just really grew, then I'd pinch it. If it was kind of weaker, not quite as robust, then... Um, Maybe you don't, or maybe you're very selective of what you do pinch. You know, that's the, it's like the thing that I learn more and more is that there are no absolutes. You know, do you pinch, do you don't pinch? Yes, you pinch after, or you know you don't pinch after you repot. It's like, it's, there is none of that. Hey, Todd, the folks on the stream want to see how much you're removing. Here. So here, this is a more robust bud. And so we'll come in and we'll leave maybe seven or eight needles. Emerging. That one's five. We left five. Emerging. Emerging needles, yeah. Hey, Todd. Yes, sir. Are you pinching everything or just the strongest ones? I am pinching just the strongest buds. So anything, there's a lot of, um, like here, we'll look. Uh, where's a bud that we haven't? So here. If we look at this, this has eight needles coming out. I haven't pinched that yet, right? Like some of this smaller growth here that hasn't really emerged, I'm, I wouldn't pinch that right now. It's like I'm just pinching um, this longer stuff, like this bud right here that's a little longer. It's like pinch that. And it's like I'm almost pinching it down to some of the smaller buds that, in, that are in there. And if those smaller buds get larger and candle, then I would go back in and pinch them. Yeah. I got a question from the stream. All right. Um, Brant Bishop is saying, in single flush pines in development, uh -huh. um, would you cut the new candles more at the apex once they've hardened off to redistribute energy to the lower branches? Single, I'll say it again. Single flush pine yep. in development. Yep. Would you cut the new candles at the apex um, once, they's, once they've hardened off to redistribute energy to the lower branches? That's a good question. I personally would not. And that'd be a good question if, um, if he wants to. Bishop, if you want, write that to info at bonesimri.com. Uh, Ryan may have a different take on it, but, um, what but would, how would you approach that? Too? My approach is I, I wouldn't. It's like I'm trying to teach, even though it's in refinement, it's a single flush pine, everything I'm trying to um, just get more surface area, 
to grow, right? So even if this is strong, it's still helping um, keep the rest of the tree stronger. So yeah, if, you, if you're wanting some of your lower branches to get stronger, you just wouldn't touch it. I still wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wouldn't. Um, I have a question, couple questions. Is this a collected tree, and where did you collect it? I'm assuming this, I didn't collect this tree. Troy? Collected. collected. I think Randy? Randy? Yeah. yeah, probably Randy Knight. <laughs> when in doubt. Oh, yeah. I'm going to assume this is a Randy Knight tree. Is Randy here? Randy? Oh, there he is. You did? Yeah, so Randy collected it. Randy collected from the Rockies? Secret, secret spot. I just said the range. I wasn't looking for a yeah. specific location. <laughs> Watch it, Kendall. All right, so on this, I think, for now, I've pinched everything that I'm going to. There's a couple buds over here. Yes, sir. Todd, I can't see too well from here. Are you pinching the buds completely out? Or no. Are you just candling? I'm just pinching the candles, right? So Two leaving. Two thirds, one half. It all depends, right? So it doesn't matter. I've made that same mistake where it's like, oh, you pinch half or you pinch two thirds. It's like whatever the silhouette is that you have, you're trying to maintain that silhouette. All right, I think I have this where, to a point to where. Where we're done. Kathy's wondering if we're leaving approximately three to four needle pairs. Um, for the most part, I'm leaving more. So, about how many? Do you have like a number that you, or is it? Just I don't. It's all. It all depends. It depends on the silhouette. It's like if okay. I need, if it looks like I need a little more space, I leave a few more needles. If it's right so could where. Could you show us where you're seeing, like where you might need more space, or mm -hmm. where you would? So, right here. On this. Yeah. This silhouette looks really nice, and so as you can see, I pinched these back to whether maybe there's four or five uh, needles. And then this here, as you can see, this branch here is almost underneath this branch on top. So I think that should probably grow out a little more, as you can see this, right? So I left a little more needles on that one, OK? Um, who, is it, who asked that question? Kathy did on the Oh, Kathy stream. online. Yeah. yeah, sorry. So as you can see here, this one's almost underneath this. So it's like we can pinch this one back a little harder. It's, this one has probably six or seven needles. This has a little more. So, yep. This has maybe six or seven needles up here. And then this is almost underneath that. So I've left more needles on this point. Okay. All right. So this next tree we have is a uh, Engelmann spruce. Um, and so as you can see on this, this is really ramified. And so I'm going to go through and pinch this so we can see how, um, how we pinch this Engelmann, how we are, we're doing to save our silhouette that we have. Because this is a really refined tree. <laughs> so this is an Engelmann spruce. And so um, spruces are one of my favorite species, uh, mainly Colorado blue spruce. And so what I'm going to do is uh, we'll start going through pinching this, but again, looking at and realizing that we're trying to save this silhouette. So as I come in here and start pinching these, this area here, it's like I know out there you guys can't see it, but this is a free stream, so you can go to Bonsai Mirai once they put this back up and look in the archives, and you'll be able to, to see what I'm doing here. Okay, and so. Part of this that I'm pinching, it's like maybe we have a couple layers here, okay? And maybe um, something on top is starting to cover up the bottom, so we'll go in and pinch that, that top portion a little more than the bottom to help save uh, and keep those. Is this an elongating species or? Yeah, so spruce is elongating. Um, and so elongating species, the strength is where? 
Employees. Pardon? Employees. Nope. That's what's what's what strength is in uh, the foliage? Juniper. What species? Juniper. Juniper, right? Pines is in the roots. Yep. Elongating species are in the vascular, vascular system. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> so it's interesting when um, the vascular tissue. Yeah. The vascular system. Yeah. And so one thing with, with spruces is, is um, they, really, they really show how apparent that is. And a lot of times when, if I go out and I collect a spruce, it won't grow that year. Um, it just sits there, and then you always know it's growing roots, right? Because it'll always push roots and grow roots before it grows um, new foliage. And so there's a place in Colorado um, where I get blue spruces, and it's called a fin. And it's a private ranch, and um, the only conifer that grows in this one area, and it's a thousand acres or so, it's the only conifer that grows there are blue spruce. And it's a very alkaline soil. And so I think because they're the strength in that vascular tissue is that they're the only species that can grow there and, and, and live in those harsh conditions. So it's really, it's a really interesting, interesting place. In those blue spruce that you collect from this area, uh -huh. how much variation do you see uh, tree to tree? Is there a, a major difference between uh, some of the trees and others? By major difference, what are we talking about? L length, uh, color, oh. uh, of the foliage, sure. et cetera. Yep. Um, so some of the blue spruces that come out of there, um, some of that foliage is bright blue. It's almost fluorescent blue like the blue spruces you see in, in, uh, in landscapes and stuff like that. And then again, some is uh, more green. So it's like anything, right? Like, um, like there's junipers that have tighter foliage than others. So, so the foliage does, uh, does change from, from tree to tree. So as you're going through, uh -huh. can you just talk us through what you're choosing to take off or w what your thought process is as you're doing this? Sure. So here, where I am right here, it's like this branch here is covering up this one below it. And there's a lot of buds here. So this here, I'm, I'm choosing to come and pinch this back, and the, the growth is a little stronger. So I'm coming in and pinching back this growth a little harder, right? Because I want to maintain. It's like that's the word of the day is maintain uh, the silhouette. And so some of this up here, I'm pinching back harder. Like this so little you're pinching different amounts. Yeah. On each. In on each. Are you leaving some unpinched too? At the moment, I haven't because for the most part, all of this is out to a to a point to where we can pinch it. If you look at stuff like that, right? That's really weak, so I won't pinch that. But spruces are the same as as um, like with the beach and with the limber is that we'll go in. The same spruce you may have to go back to second two or three times, right? Yes, sir. I've got a couple of questions right. about uh, maintenance or, or uh, cultivation of blue spruce. First of all, if you're collecting them in an alkaline soil, do you try to maintain an alkaline soil? I don't. You just don't worry about that? No, and this is the thing, right? It's just because a spruce can live in that very harsh alkaline soil doesn't mean it likes it. Right? All it means is that it can outcompete anything else that's trying to live in there, any other conifer. Right? It so it's like the same trees that grow in the mountains in those very harsh conditions. It doesn't mean they like it, it just means that they can outcompete anything else that's growing around there. Okay, so my, my other question is, is related to some previous ones, including this one. Is there any particular fertilizer or trace mineral or anything that maintains a really blue color of some blue spruce because a lot of them will fade out through the summer so they're almost back to green by the fall right and then the new foliage comes out blue other ones seem to maintain the blue color all through the summer hmm. um, 
I don't know of one, if there is one, to be honest. I, I don't know. And so, but I have found that a lot of times that same thing that you're talking about, right? That, um, like sometimes when the new foliage first comes out, it, it is a blue and then it kind of turns to more green. Or sometimes they come out of the mountains blue and then the new growth from there on, once it's, once it's healthy, um, stays very blue. Or stays very green, sorry. So, um, yeah. We have another, yes sir. Todd. Yes sir. As you're pinching away there, uh -huh. uh, you're maintaining the silhouette now. Uh huh. Where are you expecting new buds to form on those branches once you've pinched them? Yeah, great. Um, I appreciate that question. So when you pinch, like right here, we're pinching this bud right here, okay? So when you pinch that, you can get a set of buds or a, a whirl of buds right at the, where, at the base of where this new growth is, but also like in the previous year where that, that growth, the two years um, of growth uh, intersect, you can get a set of buds there, okay? And so I don't know if, if this practice is used all over, but I, there's, I don't know, uh, this notion that I heard that, um, and I heard a talk on it last year that when you have like a lot of buds on a tree, you want to go in and select buds, right? You want to select which buds you want. And to me, that doesn't make much sense. And so it's something that I'm, I don't know, it may be another piece of incorrect information, right? Because if, it, let's say we have four buds right here. And then you want to go in and take three of them off and leave two on. Well, let's say, one, you could damage the tissue around it. Two, maybe not all the buds that you left grow, right? And then you've just shot yourself in the foot. Also, let's say we have four buds here and we have, I don't know, four ounces of energy in the container, right? And so if you let those four buds go, then each bud will get one ounce. If you take two off, then each will get two, uh, two ounces of energy, right? And so um, when you have a whirl like that, you should just leave them alone and don't go in and select buds. It's, that's just, it, that's not correct information. And then all that energy goes into the four buds. They go, all grow, and then you can go back in and selectively remove which buds you, you want to keep, okay? So I don't know if it was a one-time thing that I heard or if it was kind of this conversation that had been going around, but I just, I kind of just wanted to clarify that because that's not the correct way to deal with with buds, but yes, it'll it'll push back at the the base of this year's new growth, and it'll also push back in the previous like intersections too. So yeah, but unlike a pine tree, it won't form a new bud at the tip right where you pinched on a western species. Yeah, not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. I was trying to think of examples. And I just, like two, I've seen, I've seen that on a bud where there is a bud set. So it's like maybe it does, because maybe, because I would think that I didn't miss that one, so maybe it will. But it for sure will set, if it doesn't set there when you're pinching a strong branch, it'll set buds, like usually two or several back in there. You had mentioned that the energy is in the vascular system. Uh-huh. As I'm different from the juniper or the pine, so what unique qualities can I look for in the spruce because that energy is in the trunk? As far as like removing foliage or taking away too many roots. Yeah. Um, so when we have a strong vascular system, what that means is that the tree is able to move, move resources very well. Okay, so that's what it means. So when they're, when they're growing in those really poor conditions, so where the blue spruces that I'm talking about anyway, it's like they're in that alkaline soil. Um, if anyone watched uh, the last stream with, with Ryan and that blue spruce he was working on, that, that spruce is from this area that I was talking about, right? And so the water goes underneath every year. It freezes, it severs the roots, and so the roots don't have a chance to grow like really far into the ground, right? So everything is, um, they lose a, a large portion of their roots. And so with their vascular system, they're able to move resources 
um, quite efficiently, right, from with what they have. Does that make sense? Can we get a mic? Yeah, we need a mic. So if I were going to repot, I wouldn't have to worry about doing too much damage to the roots because it recovers really quickly? No, absolutely. That is absolutely incorrect, right? We don't want to ever not worry about repotting, right? I understand what you're saying where it's like, okay, maybe I can take more off, you know, which maybe, but if you... If you're taking more off just to take more off, then you're hindering the tree and you're just taking a step back, right? So it's like we want to take as much care when we're repotting these trees as we are with anything else. Okay, and then if I also removed too much foliage, then would that branch die? Sure, sure, it can. And same with these, right? So if, if we're pinching and, or if we let this grow and we cut it back, Right? Let's say it's a, a branch in um, development. Let it grow. Cut it back. There's no buds behind it. We can very well lose that branch. And so right here, this is a good example. Okay? So this branch right here, there's no buds back on this area. Right? We have two, two buds growing here, but there's nothing back in here. And so this is a branch that's in refinement on this tree. Right? So we could either come in, and if we didn't need it, you know, or this too, this whole area is, is weak. And if we didn't need it, maybe you can remove this branch and then maybe we could take this and pull it in to fill that area. But for now, I'm not going to pinch this branch, okay? I'm just going to let this grow because we have two buds here, um, but we need this entire branch to get a little stronger, right? We good with that? Okay. Todd, I got a question from the live stream. Sure. Um, Bishop was wondering if you would prune or select branching in the early fall after they've grown out, um, kind of in follow-up to your commentary about selecting. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, that's when you could do it, and that's, that's great. Great pickup on that. So once so you let it grow out. grown out and hardened. Yeah, off. once it's grown out, once it hardened, and then let's say you have five branches that are really strong, right? Then it's like go in, select the two or the three um, probably if it's on a whirl, select the ones that you want, probably two, and then you can cut the other ones off. Has anyone ever eaten spruce needles? Yes. You have? Did you guys spray this? Have you sprayed this? Don't Dang it! <laughs> if you haven't eaten spruce needles that have not been sprayed, you should, because they're delicious. Yeah, you can make beer with them. They're very, it's like citrusy. They're very citrusy. I just, I love them. You can make tea out of them. Um, so I know every spring in my backyard when all the spruces are growing, I, I don't need to go to the store and get a salad because I have my, my vegetables that way, I guess. Yeah, like all this new, all this new growth, you can you can eat it. It really is delicious. So I don't know. I ate Such sap full bones eye immersion. Yeah, right it's like there. I ate sap <laughs> once from a juniper when I was in Utah, and uh, just, yeah, that's it. Just becomes a part of you. I figured if if trees live that long on this stuff, I'd try it, and that was a that was a bad call right there. It's <laughs> it stuck to the roof of my mouth. I was burping sap all day. It was, it was horrible. It was horrible. Yeah. It's like being in the desert, walking around in the desert, burping up sap is not, it's, it's a, not interesting at you all. You loved it. You yeah. loved it. Yeah. You got to try it once, I guess. <laughs> that's the initiation. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, yeah. I guess that's one way. Maybe that's how we can get some sunlight energy, just eating <coughs> in this part of the world. All right. So here we're still. Got a question for you, Todd. Sure. While you're having fun there, yeah. Uh, what other species do you enjoy collecting other than the Colorado blue spruce and that's available in your area that, that does well? Yeah, I mean, in Colorado, um, Douglas firs grow there. 
I mean, ponderosa pine grow there, limber pine grow there. I started getting, um, I dug bristle cones last year for the first time. Um, I dug them, put them on heating beds to baby them over the winter, and they appear to do quite well. Um, we'll see how they come out, but um, their initial signs were really good. Uh, we do have Utah junipers on the west coast, or the west coast, the western edge of the mountains. We have pinion pines. Um, those two species are a little harder to collect. We have Rocky Mountain junipers, of course, so... Um, yeah, those are the species that are that are native to to Colorado. So, what do you collect at first with first branch bonsai? What do you specialize in? Yeah, we collect uh, spruces are probably what I have the most of Colorado blue spruce, but then Douglas fir, ponderosa, limber pine, like I was saying, bristlecone pine. All those are are trees that I that I collect. So. It's like you guys are fortunate out here, and it's like you have Randy Knight, who's the arguably the best collector in the world. So he's a he's the man. So here we'll turn this this way. So this, I'm just going to continue pinching this. Um, are there any questions on? Anything that we have gone over uh, thus far? How about anything online? Any questions? It's like to review, right? Everything we do, there's a reason that we're doing it, right? There's nothing, and it's like for all of bonsai, there's nothing that we do. It's like when you're fertilizing, how you're fertilizing, where are you putting the fertilizer? Even stuff like that detailed. It's like everything that we do, there has to be, um, we need to have a reason for, for what we're doing. So there's this branch here. All right, we got this here, and then we got this here, and this guy, we have three right there. And this guy's growing in here. So this guy may be removed, but this guy, I'm not even going to pinch him, and we're just like this bud right here, we're gonna let him grow out to maybe fill in a little more. So when you're looking at your trees and you're going to pinch, it's like, oh, this, this branch right here needs to elongate, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna um, pinch it. So just because it's on a tree that, that is in a state of refinement, there's still areas in it that are still in development. Chris on the live stream was wondering when you would remove old needles on a Colorado blue spruce or what time of year you would do that. Okay, so old needles, like depending on how old they are. So if you can get this, there's a branch right here with a lot of old needles in there that are dead and yellowing up. So you could probably remove them now, right, because they're not... Um, doing much in, this, in, the, in the way of uh, photosynthesis. Um, but a lot of times when I'm first designing a tree, then what you can do is you can go in and all the crotches, right, and the first quarter of each branch go in and clean out those needles. And so it just kind of gives it a cleaner look. But a lot of times on spruces, the old needles after a couple, two, three years, they'll, they'll shed those needles themselves. So a lot of times, mm. the old needles are just, the, the tree sheds them, so. Was this a kind of trailing when it was collected, or did you have to shape it some to get into this cascade style? And uh, is it wired at all? I can't tell from here if it's Yeah, been this wired tree is or... completely wired. I didn't collect this tree, this isn't my tree. This tree is, like all these trees are Mirai trees, so I'm not sure who collected this. I'm not sure. Um, if you can see this right here, this right here was a, probably a root at some time, and so my guess is this tree was up 
this way a little more, and then they cascaded it down. That would be my, that's my initial guess. Mike was wondering how many new buds can you expect after pinching a bud back on a spruce? Mm -hmm. Usually what I found on spruce is when you pinch it back, you always, the, minim, the, minimal, the, minimum, the minimum that you get are two. Like you usually get two buds behind it. Um, but you can get, you know, like I say, in a whirl of them, so sometimes four or five buds at a, at a single location. So, yeah, here, we're just still pinching to maintain the silhouette. That better here too this is a good example of a this branch is fairly weak there are some buds in the back there's this one there's a bud right here growing down so that may be one that you come back and pinch but for the most part this branch is fairly weak so I'm not even going to pinch that okay and see if we can get it a little a little stronger So yep, same thing. Just pinching back, trying to maintain, maintain a nice silhouette here. Rennie from the live stream was wondering about collecting pinion pines. He said he's had horrible luck with it. Yeah. Um, do you collect them from granite basins? Is what he was wondering. I haven't. I haven't collected them from, um, from rock. The ones I've collected are all out of. Um, they're all out of the desert in soil. So it's like, a, pinions, are, pinions are tough um, from, what I've, from what I've experienced. But it's like a lot of those desert, desert plants are a little more difficult, I've found, to, to collect. Here's a nice thing if you just tap the underside of your branch, right? Yeah, when you're done, you just kind of tap the bottom and then any like buds that you have up there. Or I do so it a lot with junipers. Maybe just you could walk us through your process a little bit more about s selecting the way you're pinching on each branch mm -hmm. and sure. just what you're seeing. So right here, we have a nice silhouette that's right in here, right? And then we have this guy that's outside of that and this guy that's outside of that. So these aren't really ready to be pinched yet. These are pretty small and tight. But here, this one's just starting to get out, so I'll pinch, take that back a little, and then this one here is way out, right? So I'm gonna take him back in really tight to help save and maintain that silhouette. Same there. So see how that now, how it's a nice, fan shape, nice silhouette right there. So that's when you're pinching, that's what you're trying to do. You're looking at the silhouette you created and then keep, um, keep foliage that's outside of that and push it back in. And if you need to extend something, then you'll pinch less or not pinch at all. Okay, so here we have this here. This is pretty close, so I'm not gonna take too much off of that. This we have this guy growing down, which we can turn. And then this here. Yeah. There are these buds here that are kind of outside right here. So I'm gonna, I'll pinch him in, pinch him. Okay, and so then now we have that nice silhouette right there. Question? Uh, spruces have branches that sprout vertically, oftentimes from a, a junction. Okay, yeah. Uh, They'll grow is, up. 
Is there Straight any up. particular advantage or disadvantage of keeping those if you want? Uh, since they're a third branch at a junction, mm -hmm. I typically take them off, but uh, do they have any particular strength or lack of strength or any other factor to judge how to use them? Yeah, well, that's interesting because like a lot of times when we're making pads with Douglas fir or junipers, right, we have a nice flat pad and then we'll take some of these other maybe smaller branches and kind of prop them up, right, in there to make this fuller pad, right? But with spruces, you don't prop them up because if you do, then they really get strong and start growing. And so with spruces, instead of coming in and propping them up, you have to bring them up and then bring them out to fill in that area. So um, for the most part, if, if, you do, if, if I don't need a branch that's going up, like maybe if I have a, a space that's really empty, then I'll wire it and wire it out to that. But for the most part, if I have other branches that, that are filling the space properly and I have one growing up, then go, uh, growing up, yeah, growing up, then I'll, I'll remove, that, remove that branch. So yeah, it's for some reason with spruces, if you wire those things up, they just, they, re they really grow, so. Chris from the live stream was wondering if you would spray for fungus on a blue spruce at this time or during elongation and what you would use. Yeah, so what do we use for spruce? What do we use? What do we not use? Do we know that? Well, we use uh, Mancozeb, right? For spruce, we don't use Dacanil. So um, what spruces will do, like out, out here, they'll get, they get a fungus, right? And so rhizospora. And so um, if you've had a really wet spring like you have here, then, you know, it's a, it'd be a good thing to spray. And so what, what, the, what the needles do is they'll get like a green or a green, a purplish kind of brown color. And so that's when you know, then it's too late, right? It's too late. So spraying right now, especially if it's been damp and cool, it's, you know, where fungus just likes it. Now is, now is the, then I, yes, I would, I would spray for he that. He was wondering so. if you could use Xerotol. Is that, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Hmm. I don't know. I've never used Xerotol. That, that's wouldn't a good. Wouldn't recommend it, Chris. That's, wouldn't, well, right? No, I'm just, yeah. I'm just guessing that would. Yeah. <laughs> Info at bonsaimarai.com. Yeah, no, you yeah, can send it there, and, and you could probably give get Give me an something answer, to do tomorrow. I'll just answer everybody's emails. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. We're almost done with this. Any other questions? How was your show this weekend? I heard it was great. Yeah. And then watch out for... Here we have this. Yeah, so this is just... It's a lot of pinching. So in terms of the month of May, we're coming into May. Mm -hmm. For this month, as a bonsai person, yep. you should be focusing on pinching, yep. things in refinement, yep. fertilizing, yep. and spraying stuff. Yeah, if, you need, <laughs> if you're in an area that, that you need for, to spray for funguses, then you would, right? So in Colorado, it's dry and... Um, two years ago we got a really wet spring and so it's like we did get funguses but for the most part in Colorado it's it's something that we that we don't have to uh, we don't have to struggle with as much as as you guys do out here so 
But overall, for the like next month, those are things that you would be focusing on. Yep. Just pinching, letting, deciding what needs to be growing and what needs to be managed, yeah. and then fertilizing. Sure. And then too, when you're, as everyone's bringing their trees out, you know, from if you have a greenhouse or a cold storage area or whatever, just be very cognizant and conscious when you bring it out and you put it in sun, right, and give it some sun because many times I have some deciduous stuff that I leave at a friend's place because it can't handle the, the cold weather outside and it's like I have to keep it shaded for a week or two weeks sometimes before I can put it in the sun or else it just it burns. So it's like just be careful as we're starting to bring stuff out as we're repotting, right? And getting done with all that, you, you never want your trees to freeze after that point. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of shuffling back and forth. We've been in the Endeavor, we've been in the 70s, 80s degrees, and, I, and 80 degrees. I was looking at uh, the weather, I think it's Saturday maybe, and where it's going to get down to 22. That's like for Pete's sakes, you know? It's like everything's growing happy. I, I've been repotting, and then it's going to freeze like that. And that's all, I mean, that's just a hard. <laughs> mean freeze right there so it's i don't know it's it's a lot of shuffling at the moment have you had any, any experience with grafting with spruces i haven't i haven't tried never tried grafting with spruces i would assume it it should work but um timing and anything like that i i have no experience grafting spruces I have a Douglas fir sure. that has got a little overgrown in the top. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, do what I want to do is to pinch back with the new foliage and then cut back later in the year. Well, are there, um, does it have back buds? Or yeah. is it just a long? No, it's back budding. Mm -hmm. So at this point, are the back buds growing or are they just sitting there? Nothing is growing yet. It's just about ready to pop mm -hmm. out. I haven't looked at it in that gory detail. I mean, I think in a situation like that, it's kind of, it's situational, right? If the one's growing, but all the latent back buds are growing, then uh, the, all the latent back buds aren't growing, then you might just let that new growth just go this year and then cut back leaving some old growth or some new growth. Cut if, back in the fall. Uh-huh. And yeah. so... If you have three or four buds and they all start growing, then I think you could probably come in and cut back. Thank you. Yeah. I got a question from online. Um, how long after pinching can you wire a spruce? Well, with this, with how um, like supple all this new growth is, I wouldn't wire this to be safe until it's hardened off or else you're going to You'll damage the new shoots. You'll damage um, all these, all the new growth, unless you're very, very careful. So with spruces, the best time to to wire them is when this new growth is hardened off, right? And that's kind of the same with, you know, it's like pines. When those new new needles are coming, you wire it as careful as you are. Sometimes you break them, right? So if you're in a rush to do it. You could do it now, but you're going to risk Like Ryan damaging. says, if you're in a rush, you shouldn't be doing bonsai. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we all are just kind of <laughs> relaxed, right? <laughs> Thank you so much. Everybody online, go check out Todd, Todd's website. Yep. First Branch Bonsai. I have links on the live, on the live site right now, but you guys, um, Todd has cards in the back. Where are the cards? Out front. Out front. Out front. Yep. So look at his, his awesome website. Yep. Um, and you're going to be traveling all over. Yeah, I'm traveling... Uh, all over the, the, next year. the country this year. Doing, You're booked. Doing, yeah, yeah, doing workshops uh, all over and taking um, like collected and native trees to the workshops for, for uh, uh, me and the group to work on. So Yeah, and you'll be at Mirai some too. And I'm still at Mirai, yep. Everyone, thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.